At Oculus Connect, Facebook laid out a plan to get more users into VR. And one of the major components of that would be the $200 wireless all-in-one Oculus Go headset. The device doesn't require a PC or a smartphone, and I got to sit down with two Oculus product managers, and they described to me who the product is for. We think Oculus Go is a great device for people who may have previously been really interested in VR, but haven't kind of made the leap just yet. As a standalone device that doesn't require any computers or phones or wires, we think you know it's really approachable and easy for people who might be interested. And also, at $199, we think it's a great device for people who like VR but haven't tried it just yet. Oculus Go follows in the footsteps of Gear VR in that it only supports three degrees of freedom movement, otherwise known as 3DOF. Because it doesn't use external sensors like the Oculus Rift or HTC Vive, this means you can only effectively look side to side and up and down. I asked the product managers if they thought there would always be a market for 3 doff headsets. I think there's a spectrum for VR, at least today. And that spectrum on the high end has products like Rift, uh, which are fantastic six degree freedom uh, headsets. And what they offer is a lot of interactivity um, and a lot of you know depth of gameplay. So if you're into gaming, we think Rift is fantastic. That said, um, as Mark talked about at Oculus Connect, we think that spectrum extends into the standalone category, and specifically in this case to 3 doff for people who are more interested in entertainment, hanging out with friends, and some more casual or lightweight gaming. So for today, for sure, we still think there's a market um, for people to get into VR uh, with Oculus Go. Yeah, and long term, we think that the two different devices actually complement each other really well. Um, so if you do own a PC, yes, you should probably buy a Rift. Um, if you're interested in something a little more lightweight or trying to consume media, you should definitely get an Oculus Go. Um, but we also see that people want to play together. So we're releasing a suite of titles that lets cross-platform multiplayer play actually work. I think Anshar Online has up to six people playing across Oculus Go and Rift. Settlers of Catan, you can also play together. How important do you think uh, mobile six stuff is, like you know, Santa Cruz and things like that? Yeah, Project Santa Cruz is something we're also very excited about. Um, that's really in a prototype phase right now. Um, we're trying to just see how people are adopting the technology and what they can do. Um, so for today, it's really the two products, Oculus Go and Rift, that we're putting on the market. The Rift and the Vive, along with most smartphones, use OLED displays, which feature high contrast panels. But in order to get costs down, Oculus went with an LCD display. I asked the product managers if it killed them not to have an OLED panel for the Oculus Go. <laughs> um, so we look a lot at different types of display technologies. Um, we're actually really excited about um, the LCD screen. In particular, it's fast switch. So in traditional LCD screens, you can't actually flip the colors of the pixels fast enough, and that causes a blurring effect when you turn your head. Um, fast switch LCD is really a new technology. You know, we've been pushing really hard on it. Um, where you can change the colors fast enough so you get rid of that blur. And what's really nice about LCDs, actually, is that you have better pixel fill factors. So the pixels are larger and closer together, and it actually improves and reduces screen door effect. So when you look at things like text, it looks a lot better in VR. One aspect that makes Oculus Go really unique is that it features interesting open audio drivers. I asked the reps to elaborate on its design. Um, so on the audio hardware front, um, if you look at the device, there are actually these audio channel slits where um, audio comes from the speakers and then comes out this channel. Um, we're excited about it really from two fronts. The first is that we think immersive audio on a device is really critical to pushing immersion. You know, we want to have the left and right audio and the 3D audio coming through the content. Um, and so it's nice that it's integrated fully into the device. The second part we think a lot about is making this a frictionless experience. So it's easy to put on your head and take off. And we think that the strap design does that really well. Having tried numerous VR headsets, one thing that I value is comfort, particularly as it pertains to the balance of the headset. Oculus Go, unfortunately, does not offer much of a counterweight. I asked the reps to elaborate on this design. So there's a lot of factors that we're trying to optimize for. Um, one of them, obviously, is comfort and how you weigh and distribute things on the head. Um, but the things that we're also sort of counter uh, counteracting here is portability. So one big thing for Oculus Go is you want it really to take it um, wherever you want and be portable. And so you can actually collapse the strap in here and tuck it into your backpack. And we thought that was a pretty important feature, especially for a 199 device. Another aspect that separates Oculus Go from Gear VR is that it's able to reach 72 hertz. Most phones only support 60 hertz. I asked them to elaborate on what this means for the headset. 
do uh, it can do 60 hertz versus 72 hertz. Um, that's a developer option, uh, and we announced that at GDC. So depending on the content and what compute you can afford as a developer, um, you can choose which one you want. Uh, refresh rate, um, in this case, really a ties to comfort. So people can notice flicker at differing refresh rates, and brighter content especially, you'll notice the flicker more easily. And so what 72 hertz really allows us to do is push that up, and from a content side, you'll notice it less for different people. Um, we're always experimenting, trying to see what sort of refresh rates that we can hit. It's a balance and trade-off of compute and power on the device. Yeah, and I would just add that refresh rate is one component of making a really clear visual image. That's, that's what we want. We want you to be able to read text. We want you to be able to watch movies. We want you to be able to enjoy games. And that's what's really important beyond just refresh rate. There's a lot of other technology we've invested in to make that easier with Oculus Go. I see. Um, I believe that the headset support, uh, supports a foveated rendering of sorts. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Is that a hardware implementation, software? It's like a combination. So it's, um, you know, we did this in partnership with um, Qualcomm. Um, so it is a implementation on the, the compute side and through the software. Um, and what we're releasing is fixed foveated rendering. And what that means is that the center of the image is much clearer and it actually degrades and lowers resolution as you go out from the device, uh, uh, sorry, out from the center of pixels. Um, and what's that? that's really nice to do is it allows you to concentrate compute in the center and you can really amp up what we call the eye buffers. So the resolution of that center area and it looks a lot crisper. Um, it's one way we're allowing you to push the visual clarity like that mode you talked about within the bounds of this compute. Uh, will that be working its way over to Rift as well? Um, you know, I, I think Rift, it's a little less compute constrained because you've got sort of the whole GPU. Um, so it's really a technology that shines on the mobile platform. Working with Samsung for the release of Gear VR, I asked the reps how they were able to learn and improve upon that device. Oh, so many. I mean, we, we start with the uh, standalone nature of the device. And we've talked about this a little bit, so I won't belabor it, but the fact that you can throw it in a backpack, the fact that it's its own device that you can pass around to your friends, um, it just makes it an easier device to understand and an, an easy device to get started with. Um, secondly, there's a ton of new software that we're launching alongside Oculus Go. And so the Oculus TV um, platform and the Oculus Gallery apps are two things just to note that, are, that make um, Oculus Go a little bit different than the Gear VR. We do feel, however, though, if you're a Samsung phone owner, we think Gear VR is a fantastic way for you to get into VR um, and stay in VR. We just think that this offers a slightly different um, set of features for folks who might not. Let's see what are things. I mean, I think that this is a device that we've really put a lot of thought and energy into. How do you make this device feel like it's really for you? Um, it's affordable, but it also really pushes the quality in really cool ways. Like it accommodates glasses. You can buy prescription lenses if you don't want to wear your glasses. You can change out the face. The face you can plate. change out the face plate for a relaxed fit or sort of a more a tighter fit. Um, it's just we've tried to be really thoughtful about this device and really make it for you. Yeah, my take's a little bit similar to Sean's. I think at first, if you hear that there's a $199 VR device, you might think to yourself, oh, that sounds affordable, but we're really proud of the level of innovation that this headset delivers. There's upgrades in, in hardware, in the software, things that we've learned from building Oculus Rift and also building Gear VR with Samsung. So particularly proud of the lenses, the display panel, very excited about bringing that level of innovation to the market through Oculus Go. If you like this video and want to see more industry interviews, please consider supporting the Patreon. Thanks.